Okay guys, Susan at I Am My Own Maid here, and for today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a complete meal. We're going to be cooking some lemon Italian chicken thighs, some Hasselbeck potatoes, and some green peas. So I have my ingredients set out here on my counter, and as I prepare each dish, I'm gonna go through that with you. And then finally, at the end, you're gonna to get to see the plated meal and we'll see how it tastes together, okay? All right, so let's get this video started. I know, oh, that's so great, it's funny. Susan. Yeah. Hold on just a second, okay, please. Yeah. They did it again. What? They did it again? Oh, come on. I'm just queen. All right, but you know what? That's why I am my own maid. Welcome to our YouTube channel. <laughs> Okay guys, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my chicken thighs started. These are bone-in chicken thighs, and as you can see, I'm pulling back the skin because I want to season this part. So I'm going to go ahead and pull back the skin on it, place them in the skillet where I've already sprayed it with cooking spray and put about a tablespoon of olive oil in, the skillet's heating, and then I'll show you how I season these. Alright guys, so I have put some of my chicken in the skillet. Um, probably hear it sizzling in the background, but I'm gonna go over my seasonings. So first of all, I have some Italian seasoning. You can see that, there we go. Nice little blend of different seasonings. I have some leaf oregano. I have some pepper. And I have some kosher salt, okay? As well as some garlic powder. And right before I pop it into the oven, I'm going to grate some lemon peel and squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in there. All right, so let me get started seasoning these. I have two left over here. I will be cooking those, but I need to wait until some of these have brown in the skillet already. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my oven to bake at 350 degrees. And let me show you how I see it in this. And that's a little bit harder to hear over the sizzle, but hopefully you all can hear me. So I'm gonna season liberally with each of my spices. So I did the garlic powder and I did the pepper. Now you may not like as much black pepper on yours. We like things a little bit spicy around here. So I'm gonna do that. A little bit more heavy handed, the leaf oregano. All right, so we just want to give the top a good covering. And then here is my Italian seasoning blend. And I'm just going to put a little bit in my hand. And I'm going to crush it. See, it brings out the flavor more if you crush it. And I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle that on my chicken breast. Okay. The rest back in here because I'm going to need some more later. And then the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle this kosher salt. Kosher salt is very, very salty. It does have a lot of nice flavor though. So go a little bit easy on it. And now I'm going to show you. I'm going to grab a fork. I'm going to show you, I'm going to pop the skin back down over that. And that's going to be important when these get ready to go in the oven. Okay? So this allows your chicken to be flavored underneath the skin. But you can leave the skin on while you're baking so that it retains a lot of moisture. All right, because eventually we're going to be taking the um, the foil off of the top so that we can brown these skins, okay? All right, now I'm going to go ahead and let these down a little bit. It will take about somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes to brown these. 
And then I'm going to add the other ones in. And then I'll show you how I finish seasoning. Okay, guys, one thing I do want to mention here, if you see my chicken breast, I thawed those from my freezer. We're doing shelf timber. If you don't know what shelf timber is, each year in September, you try and use up what is in your freezer and your pantry um, and your refrigerator. So my point on all this, I'm gonna move this over here away from the skillet a little bit so you can hear it easier. Um, you need to dry your chicken. So you can use a clean dishcloth or you can just use a clean paper towel and just pat it gently. And that's gonna allow your top to brown really well. So I've already dried these and uh, that will help a lot when we put them in the oven. If you all can see inside the skillet, I uh, put these over and you can see they're getting a little sear on them. This is going to help it retain a lot of moisture and flavor before we pop them in the oven. So I'm going to finish these up, pop them in the oven, and then we'll get started on our pasta that we Okay, guys, so I finished searing these. You can see the skin curled up a little bit. I just seared them on both sides for three or four minutes. And then I added a little bit of garlic powder and black pepper to the top of the skin. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I have a lemon and I'm going to zest my lemon on top of my chicken. I'm giving the lemon a good roll. I always wash my, wash my lemon. And I don't know, you don't know. You don't know who's been handling your lemon or, or how many places it's been transported from. So, give it a good wash and rinse because I am going to be using the zest on the outside. Okay, and this is a pretty big lemon. All right, so let me take some of these and sprinkle them over. Now before, I probably would have cut up lemon slices, but um, I read that if you do that, the white part called the pith, P-I-T-H, that it can actually make your food bitter. So it's better just to zest your lemon and then use the lemon juice and not actually slice it over your food. Okay. So got a pretty good amount here. And then I'm just gonna check for seeds. I don't see any seeds in this one. And I'm gonna give it a good little squeeze all over the top of my chicken. Mmm, nice and fragrant already. Okay. All right, now in this cup, I've mixed up two cups of broth, okay? Just follow the back of your um, bouillon. I do use bouillon. So just follow the directions on the back about how much to put in. Remember, we did put in kosher salt, so that's gonna, that's gonna make it pretty salty, but I wanna keep this moist while I'm cooking in the oven. Okay. Now, I'm going to blend really nicely with the lemon, and I can create a sauce from that afterwards if I want. So, I'm going to pop this in my oven. It's already preheated to 350. I'm not going to cover my chicken at all because I do want it to cook and bubble, and I want the sear on it. So, um, I line the bottom of my oven with foil, but which is great because it makes cleanup so much easier. But if you're not doing that, you might want to put like a baking sheet pan underneath to catch any drippings. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the oven and then we're gonna get started on the half of potatoes and the peas. All right guys, so we're gonna get started on these half potatoes. I have scrubbed up several potatoes here and let them air dry. And a half potato, I had never even heard of that um, until recently. So I made sure I looked it up and things and I saw a great tip that if you put your potato on a spoon a big spoon right and you can hold it up like this you can cut down into the potato 
but it doesn't go all the way through. It's kind of like an accordion. Okay, so if I show you this, look, see all the nice little slices? And look at the other side, it's untouched. So I'm gonna go ahead and prepare these and then I'm gonna show you how I season them. All right, so I've cut my potatoes. You can see they're all nice and accordion-like. Back is good. Remember that spoon tip, it really helps. And here's how I'm gonna season it. I'm gonna use regular old salt and pepper to sprinkle in and over. I'm gonna use some garlic powder and I'm gonna take these little pats of butter. I've cut the butter in pats and then cut those in half. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a pat of butter between each of these potatoes. And as you see, it kind of provides an opening so I can shake my salt and pepper and garlic over that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting the pats of butter between our little accordion pieces. And I will come back and show you how I finish it before I put it in the oven. Okay guys, I have those butter pats put between the potatoes. That takes the longest time out of this whole recipe. Um, everything else is pretty simple. So as you can see, it's holding it open. I'm not gonna worry about those potatoes getting uh, tough skins on the top or whatever because that butter is pretty melty. Especially when you're making this recipe in the late summer, early fall. Okay, so see, I'm just giving a little salt and pepper and see how it's gonna go down inside the potato. If it doesn't quite go in there, I can always take my knife and kind of push them in there, okay? Like so. I did spray the bottom with the pan, as I said. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my garlic. And finally, we're going to add some paprika. That's nice color and a little flavor. These are going to be gorgeous and so tasty when they're done. Right, remember, how you season this, how much seasoning you put on for your potatoes, that is totally up to you. All right, so my oven's already been preheated to 350 and I know I'm gonna get the question of, wow, that potato in the middle is so much bigger than these other ones, right? Well, remember how we sliced that? So essentially it's almost like you're making roasted potatoes, but not quite when you slice them up. So they're gonna cook evenly. I'm gonna pop those in the oven with my chicken. They're gonna get done at approximately the same time. We have about 30 to 40 minutes more on the chicken. And I'm gonna come back and show you how I make my peas. Also a new recipe I'm trying. So stay tuned for the rest of the video. All right, guys, I know I'm gonna get questions on how to stack these two. So I put the chicken in the bottom because if that does for some reason bubble over with the juices, I don't want it bubbling on top of my potatoes. So potatoes on top, chicken on the bottom. And we're gonna close the oven and let me show you another neat little thing for my viewers that have toddlers hanging out with them. My daughter brought this in, oh, there we go, it is a nifty little lock because you know how kids open the oven door pretty easy to install press the button there we go just thought i'd add that in for all you moms and dads and grandparents with uh, some little kiddos around all right so we're gonna come back and check on that chicken and potatoes in a little bit baking at 350 and i'm gonna go ahead and prepare my items for the peas All right guys, now it's time to make those peas. So I have a bag of frozen peas here that I've had sitting in the refrigerator to get uh, thawed a little bit, as well as I left them sitting on the counter while the chicken and potatoes were baking. And I have some butter, using the leftover little pats of butter from our Hasselbeck potatoes. I have two Spoons full of sugar. Now, I know that sounds a little odd, but it's a new recipe and it's supposed to bring out the sweetness. I have some crushed mint that I'll be adding in. 
And at the very end, I'm gonna give it just a little light salt, but at the very, very end. So, to get started, I'm gonna turn on my glitter. And I'm gonna spray lightly. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my butter in. This is about two tablespoons of butter, maybe less. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I'm going to let the butter melt. Grab a wooden spoon so it won't scratch my skillet here. So I'm going to let the butter melt a little bit. And then I'm going to add in my peas. And remember, they might have a little bit of moisture left because they were frozen. So if you don't want the moisture, you may want to um, give them a little new core. You can let them sit out on your counter and thaw for a little bit. All right. So gonna stir this around and see I do have some moisture but that's all right it will break up as it is cooking so I have this on a medium heat in a non-stick skillet my butter in I'm gonna put the icy part in the middle and I'll come back and show you how I'm gonna season those all right I have my He's cooking, the ice that was left over is melted, and I'm just going to sprinkle my sugar over the peas. I don't know that I'm going to put all of this in, I just want enough to cover it to make a nice little sweetness. I would say that's probably about two teaspoons. I'm going to stir it around and let them soak up all that nice little savory goodness. All right, and then I'm going to take my crushed mint. And I'm going to put a little bit in my hand. Mmm, you can just smell the nice fresh mint there. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little squeeze between my fingers because since it's a dried spice, it just helps to bring it out a little bit more. So I've probably used about a half a teaspoon there. And I can always add a little more if I think that it needs it. So I'm gonna let this cook. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit to low. And I'm gonna let it cook for probably five minutes or so. And then I'll come back and check the flavor and add a wee bit of salt. So stick around so we can see the final product. The potatoes are cooking. The chicken's almost ready. I have peas going. Pretty soon we're gonna see it play to dinner. Okay guys, I did take my chicken out of the oven. It cooked for about 45 minutes or so. And then you can see the tops are brown nicely. If people wanna take the tops off, lifts right up. So, out of the sauce, the drippings and the broth are left over, I'm gonna make a little bit of a gravy. Okay, so how am I gonna make this into a sauce or a gravy? Very simple. I'm gonna use some pure cornstarch, about two level tablespoons, and I'm gonna add some cold water, and I'm gonna make a slurry where I just put the, the uh, it looks like hot school paste. I stirred it up with my chicken knife, and then I'm gonna add that in there. I'm just going to give it a little stir. And then I'm going to fire up my burner. I'm going to let it cook down. 